Good day, friends. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, today we want to talk about um, a very important subject as we are approaching uh, the festive season. We want to share a few tips, um, a few ideas, a few principles that we can apply uh, during the festive season, uh, the mindset that we need to take ourselves to the festive season in terms of how we can manage the resources that God has uh, given us. Shall we bow our heads as we pray? Our kind and gracious Father, we want to thank you for giving us this opportunity. We are about to open your word. We dare not open your word uh, without accepting the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. May he guide us, may he teach us, may he give us the strength to live that which he is going to reveal through his word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The festive season is filled uh, with uh, festivities, uh, people enjoying uh, themselves, going a little extra, uh, people gathering as relatives, uh, visiting, so quite a lot of, um, of meeting, uh, gathering, uh, catching up uh, with relatives during that time, the festive uh, season uh, time. Uh, during the festive season time, uh, from the trends that we have seen in the past, uh, the amount of spending also increases. Those in business, they call it their boon uh, period, where they expect to actually increase their sales, uh, increase uh, their profits, because people have a bit of income and they also the pressure uh, of the time is such that uh, people go an extra mile to try and um, uh, keep themselves uh, happy uh, according to the mood of the time. Uh, in the Bible, we find that there are principles that help us to be focused when it comes to how we manage the resources that we have, the finances that God uh, gives us. Um, there is a principle uh, of, of spending or a mindset or a way of thinking about um, managing resources, whatever God uh, gives us, which uh, I summarize as five jars. Now, the five jars, uh, the ideas are found in the Bible, and they are also supported by the spirit of prophecy. So I'm going to have a rundown of the five jars. After the five jars, we are going to look at the story of Jacob that is found in Genesis chapter 30. That's going to give us uh, a case study, some ideas of how we can deal uh, with the issue when we have uh, a bit of uh, income that is increasing, how we can uh, wisely use that. Uh, our hope and aim is that once we understand the five jars and we get into the story of Jacob, it can help us to approach the festive season um, with um, a, a good mindset, with a, a good way of thinking how we can use the resources that God has given us. Some will be getting uh, bonuses, some will get um, uh, presents uh, from, uh, from many places. So there's a little bit of income for a, a number of people. And for those also who are struggling, those principles will apply. So the first jar is the tithe jar. Um, in the story of Jacob, uh, as Jacob is uh, uh, fleeing uh, home, uh, going to his uncle, uncle's place, Laban, he has an encounter, an encounter and in that encounter, he makes, he gives uh, a promise. And that promise, we find it in Genesis chapter 28. Genesis chapter 28, uh, verse 20. The Bible says, Then Jacob made a vow saying, If God will be with me and keep me in this way that I am going and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on so that I come back to my father's house in peace then the Lord shall be my God. Verse 22, And this stone which I have set as a pillar shall be God's house, and all of that you will give me, I will surely give a tenth to you. So Jacob, um, as he is uh, going to his uncle's place, 
he makes a vow, he gives a promise to God of, that of all the increase the, that God gives him, he will surely return a tenth to him and we call that tithe. So jar one is tithe. So whenever I get income, uh, whenever I get income, whenever I get an increase, it could be profit if I'm in business, uh, it could be a salary or wage if I'm employed or gifts that I get uh, from relatives. Um, the first thing that we do is to allocate that income first into jar one, which is a, a tenth. Uh, then jar number two uh, is, is offering and welfare fund, offering and welfare fund. When we read um, uh, the Bible, um, we find that 25% uh, uh, or so of the income that the Israelites uh, got was uh, dedicated to uh, religious and charitable activities. In fact, we, uh, we have support uh, that comes from uh, patriarchs and prophets um, uh, found in chapters 50 and 51, where uh, the principles of tithing and offering, they are laid out in detail. In, that, uh, in, in those chapters, it is uh, mentioned um, that 25% of the income that the Israelites got were, was dedicated to, to religious and charitable activities. So you're looking at your tithe, you're offering also the welfare fund uh, for the poor, uh, for the orphans, uh, for, the, for, for, for the stranger. So that's your jar number two. Jar number two, it's your offering and your welfare fund. And jar number three is uh, the investment uh, jar. Uh, I also call it the field jar. So in investments, what you are doing here is that you are taking part of your income and you are plowing it back for investment. What is an investment? An investment is um, something that you, you put down, but um, uh, it grows, it multiplies. It grows, it multiplies. So the idea uh, is not the idea of saving here. So what you are saving, you are plowing it so that it multiplies. That's the principle of investment. So if we look at the economy, uh, of the, the Israelites in the Old Testament. It was really based on investments uh, because your, your tithing, uh, your offering was based uh, on uh, livestock as well as grain. So grain and livestock, they are actually the foundation of investments because if you look at your livestock, uh, they multiply. If you look at your grain, it also multiplies. Therefore, the economy of the Israel was really based uh, on uh, income generated from investments from jar three, from jar three. So, and then uh, jar number four is the emergency jar, is the emergency jar, or what we call Joseph's jar. This is a jar where you save um, some income, and that income that you save, you put into jar four. It is for emergencies. Uh, you don't know the kind of troubles that will uh, befall you, uh, that, that can befall you, so you need to have something uh, set aside. There's also uh, support from the spirit of prophecy from the book Adventist to Home, um, whereby uh, when she was counseling to several families that they, they have to set aside something every month, a portion that must be set aside, that will not be used until they are circumstances, for example, loss of income, injury, sickness, uh, that the family can, can, can survive for some time. So that's the JAR for principal emergency JAR. Then JAR number five, uh, that's your day-to-day -day expenses. So that what is left. Um, what is left after, after allocating your income or your profits into jar one, jar two, jar three, jar four, what remains, that's jar five. So jar five is your day-to-day -day expenses. So you're looking at here at electricity bills, uh, your fuel, your power, um, your food, that's jar number five. So this is the kind of uh, mindset, the kind of thinking that we need to do. If you notice that the five jars, they work on the principle that I eat last for day-to-day -day expenses. That's what concerns me uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Therefore, I allocate that last. So I always eat last is a very powerful steward principle. It's a very powerful financial management principle that it helps us uh, to be real stewards, that we think about uh, the needs of others first before we think about our own needs, no matter how legitimate they are. So that is the principle that we find in terms of the five jars. So as we approach the festive season, the principles of the five jars, they do not change. But during the festive season, for many people, um, 
quite a number, they are getting bonuses. It means that your income is increasing. So it's an opportunity for you to actually increase your allocations into those uh, five jars. Now with that, let's get into the story of Jacob. Uh, that's found um, Genesis 30 uh, up to Genesis chapter 30 up to Genesis chapter 30, 30, 32, 32 and 33. So I'm going to read uh, from Genesis chapter 30. Genesis chapter 30, I'm reading uh, from verse 25. The Bible says, And it came to pass, uh, when Rachel had born Joseph, that Jacob said to Laban, Send me away, that I may go to my own place and to my country. Give me my wives and my children for whom I have saved you. And let me go for you know my service which I have done for you. Verse 27, And Laban said to him, Please stay if I have found favor in your eyes, for I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for your sake. Verse 28, Then he said, Name your wages and I will give it. Here is something interesting that is happening here. Uh, Jacob is saying, I've saved you. Uh, for 14 years. Now I want to live so that I can provide for my own household. Then his uncle Laban, who was uh, also his employer, implored him to stay. He begged him to stay. And he, he, he extended uh, a very big opportunity. He extended um, an irresistible offer that uh, instead of Laban offering how much he was going to give Jacob so that Jacob would uh, not leave him. He did something that is unusual. He asked uh, a Jacob to name his salary. In other words, he is saying, Jacob, I'm not, give, I'm not going to give you a limit as to how much you want, the increase that you want. Just tell me how much you want and I'm going to give it to you. So here is something that is interesting here. So all of a sudden, Jacob, after struggling uh, for 14 years, uh, when you read uh, from Genesis um, chapter um, 31 and 32, Jacob uh, uh, complains about the treatment that um, he was given uh, by, by Laban before that incident where uh, Laban is seeing that uh, my faithful and productive worker is about to leave me. And if I don't do something about it, I'm going to miss a, a very powerful uh, and productive employee who has actually helped me to be where I am in terms of the wealth that I have created. Uh, so Jacob, uh, in, uh, in chapter 31, he narrates uh, his ordeal, um, how he had been treated negatively, how he had been ill-treated by his uncle, Laban, who was also his employer. So from Genesis chapter 31, we hear Jacob uh, stating uh, exactly the kind of experience that he went through as he worked with his uncle Laban. Uh, verse 38, chapter 31, uh, Jacob says, These 20 years I have been with you. Your ewes and your female girls have not miscarried their young, and I have not eaten the rams of your flock. Verse 39, That which was torn by beasts I did not bring to you. I did not bring to you. I bore the loss of it. You required it from my hand, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. Verse 40, There I was, in the day the drought consumed me, and the frost by night, and my sleep departed from my eyes. Verse 41, thus I have been in your house 20 years. I saved you 14 years for your two daughters and six years for your flock, and you have changed my wages at 10 uh, times. So this is the kind of ordeal, the kind of experience, employment experience, these employment conditions, uh, they, were, they, they were terrible. They were really terrible uh, before that turning point when he decided that he wanted to leave and his uncle uh, extended an irresistible offer where Jacob was to mention how much he wanted to be, to, 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 to be paid in. Uh, I'm talking to someone who perhaps has had a very difficult year or over the years you have found it very difficult, your employment conditions are not conducive. You really identify with Jacob the struggles that he went through. And um, like Jacob, you are still faithful, you are still productive even though you are not happy with your employment conditions, perhaps what you are getting, you, you deem that it is not uh, um, um, uh, 
it's not enough uh, compared to, to your input. Uh, this is the kind of ordeal uh, that uh, Jacob went through. Then all of a sudden, uh, his uncle is offering an irresistible offer to increase his salary. So perhaps uh, some of us, we have worked hard during the year and um, uh, God uh, has uh, uh, allowed uh, um, your, your employee, uh, your, your, your employer, to allow you to give you a bonus. So perhaps in November, uh, December, some might get uh, theirs in January. Um, uh, you, the, there is some kind of bonus, some kind of extra income uh, that is coming uh, from you. Uh, perhaps you are saying, I've worked so hard. My conditions have been terrible. I need to, to rest during the festive season. I need to spend so much as I relax and uh, renew uh, myself for, 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 for the next year. Now, let's learn what uh, Jacob did when he get that irresistible offer. Uh, that could be similar to a situation where you are getting um, a very good bonus, uh, a very good bonus that you want to, to spend uh, during the festive season. Um, verse 29, so Jacob said to him, you know I have saved you and how your livestock has been with me. For what you have had before I came was little, and it has increased to a great amount. The Lord has blessed you since my coming, and now when shall I also provide for my own house? So he said, what shall I give you? And Jacob said, you shall not give me anything. You shall not give me anything. That is his response when Jacob is uh, given um, an opportunity uh, to, to have a very good salary, uh, which he, he was going to peg as an employee, not an employer, a very rare opportunity. Um, then Jacob says, you shall not give me anything. That is his response. That's a bit puzzling, but let's follow uh, Jacob's thinking. Uh, as we continue to uh, the second part of verse uh, 31 of Genesis chapter 30, he says, If you will do this thing for me, I will again feed and keep your flocks. Verse 32, Let me pass through all your flock today, removing from there all the speckled and spotted sheep and all the brown ones among the lambs and the spotted and speckled among the gods, and these shall be my wages. These shall be my wages. So this is what he does. He says, Yes, you have given me an opportunity uh, that I should name my salary increase, but this is how it's going to be if you want me to stay. I'm not going to accept the money, but I'm going to accept my wage to be in livestock. Uh, give me the goats, give me the lambs. That's going to be my wage. Now, here is a, a very powerful decision that Jacob um, arrives at. It might appear as Jacob is not thinking straight. He is thinking straight because he is guided by a very powerful principle. So what he does, he says, instead of me getting gold or silver or coins, um, um, let me instead be paid in livestock. Why livestock? Because livestock, they multiply. So Jacob converted his a salary into an investment. So the investment class that he chose is that of livestock. And he had uh, uh, been uh, a, a, a keeper of, of, of flock uh, for 14 years. So he had experience, he had knowledge. So he says, let me invest uh, my salary in something that multiplies. So here is a concept that we can uh, take a leaf from, uh, from Jacob as we are approaching the festive season you are getting a bonus or you are getting um, some kind of increment, some kind of, uh, of, 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 of uh, income that you are getting, or you want to really sacrifice part of your income and say, I want to increase my spending. Uh, I want to increase my spending uh, for, for Jaffa, if you know, food, uh, uh, celebrations, etc., etc. Like Jacob, what you could say is this bonus that I am getting, this extra income that I am getting, like Jacob, I am going to put a lot of it into jar three, which is the investment jar, which is the multiplication jar, which is the top quality asset. I'm going to acquire some top quality assets that multiply, that multiply, such that by this time next year, uh, I, I, I would have forgotten about uh, the cakes. I would have forgotten about the festivities. They are gone for one or two days or one week. But if I take that bonus, 
uh, or part of that bonus or a greater uh, proportion of that bonus and I invest in something that multiplies by the same time next year, that little that I have invested, that much I have invested from that bonus, it will have grown, it will have multiplied, it would have increased. So during the festive season, we need to do that. But let me remind you that Jacob made a vow uh, to God as he was, um, as he was uh, going to uh, his uncle's place that he said, of all the increase that you'll give me, I'll surely give you a tenth. So we know that Jacob uh, followed those principles, um, followed those principles. So of the increase that he was getting from the, the livestock, which became his pay, uh, that increase in livestock, he also gave a tenth. So that's Jawan. And we know from the, the economy of Israel, that society, he also set aside uh, something uh, for the, something in terms of offering and also setting something aside for the, for the, for the, for the, for the, for the, for the less fortunate, uh, the struggling widow, the struggling orphan, he, he did that. So we can safely say, he, ja one, ja two, he did. Then ja three, we have seen already ja three where he is he, investing. Then there is the issue of ja four, which is the emergence ja. Yes, Jacob also had an emergence ja, an emergence ja that he set aside. Uh, we find that uh, from the book of, of Genesis again, chapter 32. Um, uh, we read from verse 4 to 7. Now, the context uh, of these verses that we are about to read is that Jacob has left a, a Laban um, after 20 years, and he is going back to his, um, to his home country. Um, he knows that uh, Esau uh, is waiting for him, and he's afraid that his brother is going to uh, seek a revenge and uh, perhaps destroy him and, 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 and his family. So that is the context so verse 4 of Genesis chapter 32 says, And he commanded them, saying, Speak thus to my Lord Esau. Thus your servant Jacob says, I have dwelt with Laban and stayed there until now. Verse 5, I have oxen, donkeys, flocks, and male and female servants, and I have sent to tell my Lord that I may find favor in your sight. Verse 6, Then the messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to your brother Esau, and he also is coming to meet you, and 400 men are with him. Verse 7, So Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed, and he divided the people that were with him, and the flocks and the heads and camels into two companies. Verse 8, and, and he said, If Esau comes to the one company and attacks it, then the other company which is left will escape. Here we are seeing the Ja four principle, the emergence uh, uh, Ja principle. Uh, what is the emergence Ja principle? Uh, if we go down there, we find that uh, Jacob takes part of his increase. He sets it aside to give it to his brother Esau as a gift for him to, to, to say, I am sorry, let's make peace, my brother. So he set aside something from his increase uh, for emergencies. So that's a principle that we can also um, uh, copy uh, from uh, Jacob to say uh, of the income that we are going to get during the festive season. Um, if you are just getting regular income, yes, you can still do the five jars. If you are getting a bonus, that's your opportunity to increase your allocation into the five jars. And that means also you need to increase your allocation into the emergence jar. For those who are not yet into this five jar program, it's an opportunity for you to start during the festive season to say, I'm going to allocate my income, including the bonus. I'm going to put it into, I'm going to put 10% uh, into jar one, and I'm going to set something, set aside something generous into uh, jar, into jar, into jar two, and something also into jar two for welfare. And I'm also going to, like Jacob, to convert part of the, the income that I get and my bonus into acquiring some top quality assets so that I can invest, so that what I invest can multiply. Like Jacob, I'm also going to set aside something for emergencies. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but let me set aside something for emergence just in case... Uh, uh, something befalls me that I don't know, I must have some ready, some ready cash that I have in my, in my Jar 4. Then Jar 5, 
is that which remains. That which remains, that's where you can also get some, 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 some income for your day-to-day -day activities, uh, for your day-to-day -day needs, uh, your food, um, and uh, your, your food needs, you know, your rentals, for those who have rentals, your day-to-day -day expenses. So that's the kind of thinking that we are encouraging us to, 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 to do. If we do that, it means that when we come into January, uh, um, in this country we talk of January disease, uh, January disease where people have uh, spent and overspent uh, during the festive season, they find themselves uh, with, uh, uh, with, with no money and they are facing uh, problems, uh, challenges for, for to, to fund school fees, to fund their day-to-day -day activities. And we, some, they begin to go to, 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 to get uh, debt, uh, very expensive debt uh, from those who lend, um, from, from, from those who lend, and they find that they are struggling to pay back that debt for quite a number of months. So here's an opportunity for you to have the right mindset and you, 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 you allocate the income that you get, including the bonus, and you say, I'm going to be disciplined through the power of the Holy Spirit to follow this, uh, uh, this process of allocating my income into five jars so that when uh, it comes to, to January, um, I still have what income that's set aside for school fees and other things that are important, but already I have also assisted the less fortunate. I have uh, supported God's work in terms of my tithe and my offering. In terms of my welfare fund, I have also supported the orphan, the less fortunate, who could be amongst my own relatives and those around in society. And I have also invested something that multiplies that during the year is going to multiply. And as I reach the end of the year, um, including my next year's bonus is also increasing uh, and um, um, adding to the multiples, the things that have grown and invested through a decision that I made during the festive season that I am going to invest in something that grows and multiplies uh, like Jacob. So if we continue on that path, then we are going to live as faithful stewards who have got the right mindset when it comes how to manage the financial uh, resources. And over time, you'll see that we are going to grow, uh, grow in terms of um, uh, the soundness of our finances and also our opportunities to grow spiritually as we support God's work, as we support the needy, as we also even prepare uh, to, to, as we prepare even inheritance for our grand grandchildren. Uh, but the journey of a thousand mile uh, begins with the first step. So this is the kind of thinking that we are saying we need to practice. It is not easy. Uh, it is not easy for many people, but we need then to be very prayerful to say, here is the message that you have given us, O oh Lord. Without your intervention, we are unable because the habits that have built over time are very difficult to, to get rid of. So we really need the intervention of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit to give us the power to understand these principles at our level of understanding uh, and also our different circumstances that will be able to gradually um, uh, um, adopt uh, this uh, kind of thinking to help us beyond the festive season, uh, beyond the festive season as our lifestyle until the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to be praying for you as we come to the end uh, of this uh, presentation. Shall we bow our heads as we pray? Our kind and gracious Father, I want to thank you for giving us this opportunity to share from your word. Here are principles that are coming from your word that help us to be faithful stewards, stewards of uh, the talent um, of, of wealth, of, of money that you have given us, that we'll be able to know how to use it, that we always eat last. Help us, Lord, as we process these ideas of the five jars so that we can uh, adopt them, give us the power without the intervention of the Holy Spirit to explain to, this, uh, to, to us uh, these principles further and to give us uh, the power and the ideas so that how we can start and to continue and to stay the course of applying uh, these principles that help us to be financially disciplined, to become socially responsible, to become spiritually mature, such that we are not selfish. We always think about your work first. We think about the needs of the less fortunate. We also think 
about investing that which you have given us so that uh, we multiply it because you say talents need to be multiplied and wealth is a talent money is a, is a talent that given us that we need to multiply and also to make sure that before we think about our day day to day needs we need to set aside something for emergencies uh, thank you so much help us not to start jar five as our first jar also to have a life that's centered around jar five where what we get we always spend it and we don't allocate it according to this order that you have given us help us O oh lord as we approach the festive season um, to be empowered to be given that discipline to be able to adopt sound financial principles that are based on the bible for our benefit and for the benefit of humanity this is my humble prayer in jesus name Amen.